I've uh, been working in the mobile space for about seven years now. Um, so in, in the world of mobile, I'm somewhat of a dinosaur, which is strange to think about. Um, or you know, a renaissance man. Uh, yes, that, I, I would love to go with that. Because it's surviving basis. that period of ringtones and wallpapers uh -huh. as a marketing strategy. Uh, you deserve to be where you are now. It, it was actually funny when, the, when uh, my, uh, my friend approached me about getting into mobile, that was my first response was, you mean ringtone downloads? I, I don't know if that's going anywhere. <laughs> so, you know, it's been, a, it's been a long road, but it's been very exciting to see everything just kind of explode. Um, so, you know, on a, on a daily basis, I, I get to wear anywhere from, you know, 10 to 47 different hats. Um, you know, I, I work with my internal teams at Maxis to make sure that they understand the trends happening in the marketplace, uh, what partners are available to them to accomplish specific objectives. Um, and then, you know, try and make sure that they're educated on just the simple things, right? And one of the, one of the challenges for, for, I think, all brands across the board is, Mobile has evolved so quickly that we tend to try and fly before we learned how to crawl. So, you know, I really try and stress the basics and make sure that we're building the house from the foundation up and not trying to build it from the roof down. Um, you know, a as it goes, uh, I try and make sure that I'm getting into the brands directly as much as possible because you just can't get enough education for them. Um, they have plenty of other things going on and trying to keep up with the fast pace that is mobile right now is very difficult. Not to mention the fact that mobile has so many different facets to it that you can actually take advantage of between messaging and media and content and social. It just, it's never ending and it, and it continues to grow as, as we look at wearables and uh, virtual reality type of opportunities. Um, it, it, it just, it's endless right now. In this year, not what we're expecting on the horizon, yeah. but right in our, right in, within our grasp here in 2015, the tool set that uh, mobile offers to the marketers and the like. From your perspective, and have seen a lot of things that ended up meeting expectations and throughout being in mobile for a minute, you've yeah. seen the ones that have been overhyped and have fall short of expectations. What are you most excited about? What do you see that's happening this year in the mobile marketing space that's exciting from your perspective and your own feelings about where it becomes an asset for the marketer? So I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, some stuff that doesn't really pertain to marketers at first, but uh, I'll evolve into where, where it kind of hits that, that medium. Um, right now, the, the biggest excitement for me is to watch the, uh, the innovation in hardware. Right, the innovation in chipsets that are being implemented into the devices. Um, I think that was one of the biggest struggles early on to try and get big branded experiences on the mobile platform. It wasn't just about the, the small screen. Um, it, was, it was a lot of times about the handsets not actually being able to contain the type of media we wanted to run. So seeing the increase in availability of being able to run HD and virtual reality makes creatives' mouths water, right? And we start to see this year and, and moving into the second half of 2015, we're really starting to create much more immersive ads, you know, using three-dimensional um, advertisements in the display world, um, even from a Facebook perspective, starting to use stuff like GIFs or Cinemagrams. Um, it's, it's a very intriguing time for the creative aspect of mobile marketing and advertising because we do get to start creating much more immersive worlds that consumers can essentially lose themselves in if we do it right. What do you see as a potential for not only deeper engagement with the brand on mobile, but more importantly, the analytics that will support it? So um, that's actually a great question because one of the things that really excites me too about this year is, is the cross-screen play. Being able to understand that this laptop, this mobile phone, or this tablet belongs to the same user we can really start to get uh, creative with our messaging where we're doing much more dynamic messaging as well as uh, much more uh, in the realm of uh, progressive messaging. So, for example, 
Uh, if you were to engage with a brand and you started off on your mobile device, continued on to your desktop, and then moved over to a tablet, your experience with my brand might be different from mine if I was to say start my engagement off on the laptop and move to a tablet and then go to the mobile phone. Because we understand that it's the same user and we understand how they've engaged with our brand before, we can start looking at how we want to approach them in that next iteration. And so we really find that that creates an atmosphere where you don't have the ad fatigue of running the same 15 or 30 second trailer or television spot over and over again on every platform. So it's not always just about the creative itself and the imagery, but understanding how you leverage the data that's available to create a personalized user experience for every single consumer.